Now, with views you can trust and opinions you cannot ignore, the State of the Nation, next on Avaverna 24. The following program on Avaverna 24 is classified MA. It is intended for adults and may be unsuitable for children under 17. It may contain crude and decent language, explicit sexual activity, graphic violence, or political ideology. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. State of the Nation is an opinion-based program. The thoughts and opinions shared within this program are not intended to offend or disregard anyone's perspectives or beliefs. We aim to foster open dialogue, encourage critical thinking, and explore thought-provoking subjects. Recognizing the importance of diversity and inclusion, this program welcomes all viewpoints and cherishes the right to express them freely. This program also contains the opinions of the participants and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verna Media Network. The network believes in a safe space for all ideas to be expressed and on its duty to create such a platform for free speech. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. Too low terrain, pull up. The story of our national airlines is just like a flight path. You tend to stay in the skies, but turbulent weather keeps bringing everything down. With a staggering debt and an ongoing crisis, Sri Lankan Airlines these days is known for flight delays, staff shortages, and more importantly, the colossal losses made every year. Many have come in to fix this airline, and just like the broken seats in the business class, they continue to fail repeatedly. For insights, analysis and opinions, tonight I will speak to the former CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines, Vipula Gunathilaka, Minister of Shipping, Aviation and Ports, Nima Siripala de Silva, SJB Parliamentarian, Eran Vikramaratna, SLPP Parliamentarian, Dr. Nalaka Godaheva, world-renowned economist, Professor William Lazonic, Police Media Spokesperson, SSP Nihal Thaldua, and clinical psychologist Dr. Nilusha Gunathilaka. Good evening, I'm Mahesh Johnny, and this is the State of the Nation. In a world fueled by division and discord, it's time to peel back the layers and shed light on the state of our nation unapologetically. Good evening everyone, welcome to the show. I know some of you might be thinking, why should I watch a show that challenges my belief? The answer is very simple, growth. Growth only happens when we step outside our comfort zone and engage with different ideas. And that's what precisely what we at State of the Nation offers, a platform for intellectual growth and civil discourse. Let's get things started. Well, you have heard many times people say, hey, even myself, Sri Lanka's problems are solvable. But why are we suffering? Your monthly salary doesn't even last for more than 10 days. Expenses are skyrocketing and it has been absolutely nightmarish for most of us living in this island. However, the thousand talks given by the so-called big shots, economic think tanks, proctors, doctors, professors, politicians and whatnot in Colombo in solving the issues of Sri Lanka seems to be a bit laughable. Why? All they do is tell you how they can fix your life, but history dictates that all they do is paint a fairy tale for you, get the power and live a luxurious life for themselves. Right now, the issue with our economy is that Sri Lanka doesn't have dollars, not rupees, dollars. So to get dollars, there are only very limited methods. One, sell our goods to the world and get the dollars, AKA change this country into an industrialized economy. The other most popular and sought after action by our politicians is to borrow. Even right now, we continue to borrow more to fix an economy broken by heavy borrowing by those very same politicians who caused the problem. 
Do you really see an effort by this government to create more jobs, create more opportunities, push the SME sector, give more power to the working class and create an environment that's investor friendly? Do you see that happening, honestly? But you hear those thousand talks, don't you? We become a nation of talkers. We just talk, 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 talk and talk some more. We tell people we are this, we are that, we believe in this, we are this type of people, these are our values and ethics and all the nonsense under the sun. But when it comes to the action, well, our action shows the real us. Today we need to change that if we are to move forward towards success as a nation. Today we need to stop talking and start acting. We need to tell our leaders, enough talk, get to work. Listen to the chairwoman of uh, Ceylon United Business Alliance, Tanya Abesundra, who explained clearly with the reality with our leaders. Watch. When you have, when you have a salary of 80,000 rupees, when you are paying electricity bill about 20,000, <laughs> water bill about 3,000, and uh, the rest works out to about 50, 60,000. So you have about 30,000 left for your food. Then where is the money for extra expenditure? So this niche market, this economical growth is only in Colombo. And mind you, this lavish life is led by people who are making these decisions. Cut government expenditure. What is 51% of the country's GDP? Cut that off. Start cutting from the top, not from the bottom. Don't cut the root. Cut a branch off. <laughs> if you cut the root, the tree will die off. If you cut the SMV, the country will die off. Every day I talk to and meet many people from various walks of life in, in my capacity as a talk show host. They tell me so much of things and they continue to tell me about what kind of people they are. They talk a big game, but as a principle in life, I determine the real person by simply looking at their actions. Because most of the time their actions reveal the truth and their talk simply becomes another lie. Perhaps a quality we all as citizens need to develop as we head to another election cycle in 2024. We'll be right back. State of the Nation. In our lead story tonight, is our national carrier, Sri Lankan Airlines, falling apart? Is privatization the only way forward for this cash bleeding airline? As you all know, Sri Lankan Airlines have been struggling since I believe around 2010. Suddenly, there is a very positive growth and the next moment a downfall. Very recently, you would have witnessed the drama from Katunaika as Sri Lankan passengers were stranded when the airline couldn't find a specific aircraft to carry passengers to Kathmandu. The aircraft assigned faced technical issues and couldn't find a replacement to ensure that the flight continued, hence the chaos. Watch this uh, YouTube report by Josh Carhill, an aviation influencer with over half a million subscri subscribers on YouTube and more than a million on other socials. He recently flew on Sri Lankan Airlines and had some choice words to express about his experience. Watch. Sri Lankan Airlines isn't capable to maintain its planes due to the lack of funding and engineers, which means most planes are either grounded or need extra maintenance to stay airworthy, causing hours of delays to the airline's daily operation. My flight was no different. There seemed to be an issue with the tire and engineers were rushed to the scene to change them which caused an hour of delay. And this is the problem of Sri Lankan Airlines. It does happen on a daily basis and makes them super unreliable. But it was then time to finally board my flight to Singapore, operated by an Airbus A330-200, of which the airline operates five. The average age of this fleet is well over 20 years. Another reason why they constantly break down. 
However, today we are traveling in economy class, featuring 279 seats in a 242 configuration. Each seat comes with a personal entertainment screen, headphones, a USB slot, and of course, a portable table. I had to give the terrible filthy window a good wipe to discover another surprise. And yes, you guessed right, we had another technical issue. This time the wing needed a bit of fixing, which would create another hour of delay. So here I was, in a packed plane, wondering whether we ever get off the ground. Two hours later, a miracle happened and we finally pushed back for our flight to Singapore. And no, this is not a comedy show, this is the everyday business of Sri Lankan Airlines. Not exactly a happy experience uh, for Josh. Well, what we are trying to do here on State of the Nation is not to bash our national airline, but to talk about the problems of it and then try to find lasting solutions that would have uh, helped revive this iconic airline. Sri Lankan Airlines has been making yearly losses. Consecutive events in Sri Lanka since 2019 have not helped this airline. In June, Sri Lankan CEO Richard Natal told the European Aviation magazine that the immediate priority was to restructure the airline's balance sheet given the high cost of servicing its debt and then move to sell the carrier despite the government refusing that statement. We'll hear from the Minister of Aviation shortly. Now here's the raw data. In the 12 months to March 31st, 2023, Sri Lankan posted a loss of 75.03 billion rupees, that's around 232 million US dollars, on revenue of 365.17 billion rupees, that's around uh, 1.13 billion dollars. Clarifying this, Sri Lankan Airlines says that the loss was due to the rupee depreciation and the impact on USD denominated debt. Sri Lankan's management accounts are in USD and earnings and uh, costs are predominantly in foreign currencies. Now, according to them, on its USD accounts, the airline is either breaking even or marginally positive. However, the debt portfolio of Sri Lankan Airlines ain't promising either. Let, uh, let's get some uh, data on that uh, debt issue uh, of Sri Lankan Airlines and for that let's cross over to the data board where economist Imran Furkan is standing by. Imran, good to see you once again. Thank you very much for being here. Imran, uh, what's the story with Sri Lankan Airlines? What's the reason that this uh, national carrier can't even come close to competing with regional uh, carriers when it has the full potential? Um, nice to be with you, Mahesh. Um, well, I think the two main things, right? Occasionally, they are making operational profits, but they are weighed down by a lot of debt uh, from the past, um, and, and the cost of servicing that debt is very high. And now, uh, lessors, the people who, you know, Sri Lanka doesn't own a single plane, right? Uh, all the planes are leased uh, from airline companies, airline leasing companies, and they're not very keen on giving them new planes either, because yeah. that's why we can't get those replacement aircraft uh, for these breakdowns very fast. I think they've been trying to get uh, A330 for a long time. Uh, the best they've done is with A320s. Um, and if you look at the why that is, um, it's very simple, right? Uh, Sri Lankan's problems are not just Sri Lankan's problems. They are also weighing down uh, several other entities. One is the CPC, right, which uh, uh, the Sri, uh, Sri Lanka owns a lot of money to. And effectively, there was a period, uh, particularly last year, where CP was, CPC was effectively insolvent or bankrupt. Uh, and then the state banks, right, particularly People's Bank and Bank of Ceylon, they have taken a brunt of this debt. And it, this debt is on their balance sheet and really it, it creates problems for them as well. And obviously the international bondholders um, as well. And there's a bit more money, uh, you know, owed to, um, uh, to, to lessors, engine suppliers and so on. So when you owe these people money, would they give you new planes? Right. Uh, indeed, uh, Imran, uh, with regard to this debt, uh, what you said, uh, I mean, we have data later on as well, um, the fact that nobody wants to give any loans, any money, any anything to Sri Lankan Airlines, and, and the fact that they don't own a single aircraft, uh, that's worrying, because, um, you know, where is this airline going to bank on in case, you know, something 
happens because it, it, it it's not like those days where everything is hunky dory and there is a peaceful period that we covid kind of taught us a, a very valuable lesson what do you think that they should be doing right now well i think there are, there, there are a couple of things to do restructuring is critical i think they've done a lot of cost cutting there's a lot more to do but restructuring also involves doing you know taking checking up what they have in terms of what is profitable right uh, so now remember sri lanka the government of sri lanka owns sri lankan airlines and what it needs to do uh, very quickly and i think it, they are working on it is to remove the profitable parts of this entity uh, and bring it under them because it, they are, they will have to assume the debt um, you know if they're going forward um, uh, out of sri, uh, you, uh, you know uh, sri lankan so that somebody else can buy it so what is profitable ground handling is profitable sri lankan catering is profitable obviously these are monopolies <laughs> that is why it is profitable right um, if it But was <laughs> yeah. imran the the question is the bread and butter is the airline industry you know the catering or anything how, so how come they're getting the catering thing right that means they're cooking well but apparently they can't fly properly oh, what, 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 what is the issue here you think yeah. because the, it, it proves that what you just showed proves the fact that apparently there are areas where sri lankan is very strong uh, and, and it is profitable what is the the blockage in your opinion uh, that we can't get the main uh, issue which is the sri lankan airline which is you know flying from one destination to the next taking tourists uh, carrying people um, that particular aspect has been uh, you know not further to an extent where we can make profits out of yeah. it yeah so two things right number one is um, the reason why these two are profitable catering and ground handling is because they are monopolies right but the airline has to compete with other airlines that right. are run much better so obviously they are failing in that respect um but also you need to uh, also realize a couple of other things right uh, successive governments have burdened sri lankan yeah, yeah. with inefficient workforces horrible uh, aircraft procurement deals um you know and also the the issue of um, uh, you know forcing particularly the tourism industry has been trying to force the the airline to run unprofitable routes yeah, but yeah, that yeah. benefit uh, you know the tourism industry so i think it's been a bit unfair in in that context indeed um, um, yes. the government should come uh, and do their job and make sure that these things have been properly ironed out and let sri lankan airlines uh, do its thing but um, we i'll see you uh, in a bit uh, but the economy is imran for come thank you so, so much we had to leave it at that now the debt and operating cost are not the only headaches sri lankan airlines has sri lankan airlines uh, operates around 70 flights per day with only 23 aircrafts and out of that 23 aircrafts four are out of service meaning they only fly those 70 odd flights per day with just 19 planes as you can clearly see most of these crafts are overused and no wonder they break down all the time now fixing takes a lot of time but the technical team does their best to rectify it and put it into service however one thing they cannot compromise is safety I spoke to several Sri Lankan Airlines officials to get the real picture inside Sri Lankan Airlines and the issues they point out are alarming. They spoke to me uh, on the condition of anonymity to ensure that we bring the problems of Sri Lankan Airlines uh, our national carrier into the fore and find a solution collectively. Now so this within uh, the company tells us that in a recent attempt to cut costs Sri Lankan Airlines management has cut meal allowance of onboard flight crews now those are the things uh, Imran pointed out earlier on about cost cutting this means if you are a flight attendant working on a route let's say uh, from uh, Colombo to London which is uh, around 12 hours you are entitled to 3 meals as a passenger you will get 3 meals and any amount of tea coffee and water which the cost is embedded in your ticket however The crew in overlay flights now has to pay 25 US dollars per meal from their own pocket meaning the vouchers are provided but later it will be reduced uh, from their salary so the crew working on a long haul flight that's over 12 hours which is uh, precisely how the london flight takes for one leg they have to cough up around 75 US dollars that's almost around 25000 rupees just for their meals Now this decision to drop the meal allowance occurred during the covid pandemic however the management promised uh, that the staff to provide it after a couple of years but still nothing has happened now in other airlines this is not the practice international flight crews are entitled to meals accommodation transport and per diem so is sri lankan so cash strapped 
that they need to nick into the meal allowance of the crew? Not only that, there's a massive staff shortage as well. If you have been on a long haul flight, you know how much the crew needs to work to make the flight a pleasant fun for the passengers. Once again, if you go back to the same example of London flight, which operates, uh, I think, around uh, an A330 aircraft with the capacity of around 250 passengers in both classes, it takes about 12 crew members to service it. Nowadays, in most instances, it's just run by nine crew members. There are staff shortages in every Sri Lankan flight, meaning the crew members working on those flights are undoubtedly overworked. So in order to get a response from Sri Lankan Airlines, we pose those questions and concerns to the media manager um, after trying our level best to get the CEO to come and speak to us. However, we were told that he, the CEO, was very busy. But he does do interviews with international media at workshops. So I'm now trying my level best to get into those one of those workshops so I can ask those questions from him. I can understand, honestly, the CEO being busy, but why do they continue to hide behind media statements and bogus image building campaigns puzzles me when there are real questions about the airline's operations. Why can't Sri Lankan Airlines cannot be honest with the Sri Lankan people? After all, this airline is owned by the Sri Lankan people. It's not privatized yet. And even though he, uh, the CEO is doing a job, the CEO is accountable for the Sri Lankan people as his exuberant salary is paid by taxpayer money. Anyhow, Sri Lankan Airlines released this statement to us and they said, well, with regard to the staff meal allowance cost, apparently, just like I said earlier, instead of answering as to why they continue to do this post-COVID, Sri Lankan Airlines says that their salary cuts were imposed on all staff during COVID and that they were mainly austerity measures taken by the company due to financial crisis and as a result of the pandemic. Now, with regard to short uh, staff shortages, Sri Lankan Airlines says that external recruitment is taking place to fill all positions required for the operation. Um, and to the question pertaining to whether the current staff is overworked, well, Sri Lankan Airlines says all guidelines given by the regulator are strictly adhered to at all times. The scheduling department is also audited regularly to ensure that the operation is conducted accordingly. Now, crew schedules and hours are within global norms, and nobody is accusing that uh, they are violating the, the hours of, of the staff members or what. Everyone is saying that there is a staff shortage. So when you need like a 12 crew member flight and you have only nine, obviously the nine is overworked. And with regard to uh, shortages in equipment to fly in respect of the uh, 8A350 aircraft with a lease or purchase, uh, Sri Lankan Airlines uh, confirms that Sri Lankan Airlines did not take delivery of any of these aircraft. And the terms of these cancellations are subjected to confidentiality provisions. And that shows of course, they did not uh, uh, take delivery of any of the new aircrafts because apparently it shows just like you saw earlier in the program with uh, the report from Josh. Well, that was a statement uh, by Sri Lankan Airlines. It seems like that they continue to pay a lot of money for image building purposes and campaigns in order to tell everybody that Sri Lankan Airlines is doing very well. There are no issues. But if you're treating us tough, that's a problem and we have to fix that. Let's get some clarity on the issue about Sri Lankan Airlines. Joining me now from London, UK via Zoom is the former CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines and the present Chief Officer of Jet Airways India under its new management team, Mr. Vipala Gunatilaka. Thank you very much uh, for your time uh, and, and appreciate you talking to me. Now, when talking about Sri Lankan Airlines, uh, I really don't know where to start because there are so many issues regarding our national carrier. Right now, flight delays and other matters are causing a major image issue. People locally and even within the airline seems to be saying we should privatize. But in my opinion, that's a bit risky because a nation needs a national airline. What is your opinion, sir? Uh, how can we fix this airline in a manner that will benefit the country? Good evening, Mahisha. It's my pleasure to join you uh, via Zoom. Uh, yeah, let me start with the first question. Airline, what Sri Lankan airline is going through today is uh, 
as a result of so many issues and challenges that they have faced over the years. People forget that we are just recovering from a, the worst pandemic in the history. Right. So you would have seen that most of the airlines have gone bankrupt as a result of the effects of the pandemic. So yet Sri Lankan has been able to survive and manage and I think they are still doing their best to conduct business as usual. Of course, most of the airlines uh, went through the bankruptcy process. The country that I work currently in India, uh, two airlines are going through the same process. So that way, Sri Lankan has done a remarkable job. Uh, also, I must also praise the government at that time. They intervened and uh, inducted some capital during the pandemic. So the question is, second question is, do we need an ally? Sri Lanka being an island nation, I always believe and I've been a firm believer of that we need a home-based ally. Otherwise, how are you going to connect this island, which is uh, situated in a very crucial location, I mean, between the two superpowers in Asia. So we need an ally. We need a home-based ally. It need not be a national or a government-owned airline. Take Maldives, for example. The, I mean, they're doing, they're bringing close to one and a half million tourists today, thanks to the airline plus other airlines helping them. Indeed, uh, sir, financially, this airline is bleeding money and not just money of the airline, but the taxpayer money. How come other airlines seems to be doing well in the region and not Sri Lankan airlines? I think this is as a result of accumulation of so many issues. People forget that we fought a war for almost 30 years. Then I can tell you that during my tenure as a CEO, we went through so we had to face so many geopolitical challenges. I would remember, I would recall starting from the that 46 or 56 day government that had impact on the airline and the tourists coming in. Then we had the East attack. That was a huge setback. And we bounced back from that and we were doing reasonably well. Then we had to deal with the pandemic. So, I mean, all those, no airline would have survived, right? Uh, if, uh, I mean, so many multiple bombings uh, during the LTT time, then all those things got affected. So, and also the thing is airlines, are, airlines need a lot of capital. I mean, so sometimes if you do, if you're not living in an economy where there are no huge businesses, which Sri Lanka is, I mean, our businesses are compared to international standards are very, very small. And like India, they got Tata to, I mean, support financially uh, India. So you need a lot of capital and capital uh, induction is important from time to time. That doesn't mean that uh, you should be given a free hand, I mean, free flow of capital. But say, out other example is two airlines in India, like Go First and uh, Spice. They're struggling at the moment. One is going through the Chapter 11 process for the simple reason they were owned by the private enterprises. So they didn't have enough capital to inject after the pandemic. So now their one airline is already grounded. So we, we got to be very careful. We should not get emotional or we should not go with the trend and say we should privatize, privatize. We got to look at because airline is important. It will play a crucial role in the economy. So we need to have the right balance. Indeed, uh, well, uh, staff seems to be a very crucial component and right now there's an issue in getting the qualified staff on board. In your opinion, sir, how can we fix that? I think this is a huge challenge. Globally, what has happened is after the pandemic, the airlines have come back to the market, adding more and more capacity, though there's a huge demand. So there's at the moment, there's a supply uh, demand mismatch. So come from a country like Sri Lanka, our systems, I mean, we are still a developing country. Our services are not as great as uh, what you compare and compare to the other countries. So people are, I mean, attracted towards uh, 
greener pastures. So it's quite natural. So what we should be doing is continuously start recruiting and training people. I think the problem with Sri Lankan was that they did not get the right approvals at the right time soon after the pandemic to recruit these people. I mean, staff is something people like pilots, engineers, there's a steep learning curve and it takes time to, to at least two to three years to produce the energy junior uh, first officer. So you need to make those investments and continue. So Middle Eastern Airlines and the Gulf carriers, they're quite fortunate. They've got deep pockets, so they pay whatever the money and get them. Absolutely. Uh, finally, uh, we are running out of time. So uh, very quickly, privatize our restructure. I think we need to privatize. The simple reason is what is more crucial for an airline is ability to make fast decisions, right decisions, quick decisions which Sri Lankan is lacking at the moment with the current shareholding structure. So, I mean, I've been working for a private airline and the decision-making ability is very fast. You want to get an aircraft, you go to the market, source the aircraft, do the right thing, go to the board, get it done in like a few days. But here they have to unfortunately go through all these stringent processes, which is important from a governance perspective and all that. But that is basically hampering the growth and the progress of the airline. So in that context, it's important to privatize, but at the same time, you've got to strike a balance. Privatize who is the shareholder? Has he got sufficient financial capacity in a crisis like now? Imagine if Sri Lanka was uh, running by a private ent enterprise during the COVID time, they would have gone bankrupt, you know, two, three years ago. So that at that time, fortunately, the government intervened and um, injected some money. So you've got to strike a balance. You've got to have the right capital structure. Maybe a private-public partnership uh, would be the way to go, in my view. Indeed. All right. We have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, that was former CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines, Vipula Gunathilaka. Thank you very much. Let's take a short break. More on Sri Lankan Airlines and its current wars coming right up. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone, to the State of the Nation. We are continuing our coverage uh, on uh, Sri Lanka's national airline, Sri Lankan Airlines, and its woes. As I mentioned previously, Sri Lankan Airlines also have a shortage of equipment, meaning they need more aircraft to run their day-to-day -day operations. To make the airline profitable, it needs to fly more profitable routes. And those profitable routes demand quality service, safety, and now the need to ensure a less carbon footprint. <laughs> One of the ways Sri Lankan Airlines can uh, purchase new crafts is by leasing them. And, and just like um, Imran said prior, not one single aircraft is owned by Sri Lankan. However, thanks to the decision by the current governor of the central bank to default this nation, no leasing company, no bank and no guarantor would any longer vouch for Sri Lankan Airlines and its purchases. During the Yahapal near debacle, if you remember, Sri Lankan Airlines was on the verge of purchasing the latest aircraft in the market, the A350s. Eight orders were put in to ensure that we have the latest craft at least uh, flying those long haul routes. But a decision by the then government on the principality of taking revenge from the Rajapaksas managed to scrap that deal. Right now, four A350 aircrafts have been cancelled, resulting in heavy fines and still four orders seems to be active. Now, that is according to the aircraft manufacturer Airbus. Here's the then uh, State Minister of Finance and State Media, Eran Vikramavna, who, uh, who was appointed to head a team to restructure Sri Lankan Airlines, talking about the matter to us. Watch. What we subsequently, of course, know is that Airbus acted fraudulently with Sri Lankan Airlines. The serious frauds office in the UK convicted Airbus of uh, several corruption payments to several countries and Sri Lanka was one of those that was highlighted. 
uh, <coughs> therefore uh, the people the numbers were given and uh, <coughs> basically they were, it was a fraudulent transaction because it was not above board and not proper procurement processes have been observed. Now in addition to that we have a situation where subsequently uh, government in which I was also a member decides to cancel four aircrafts of those originally contracted eight and a payment was made. Now the decision as to uh, really return some of those aircrafts was also one is financial uh, and the other decision is sometimes when management changes management has different views. Uh, the issue and the debate there is we had to pay a cancellation fee about the fee that we paid. Obviously there was more than one view on the fee that was being paid. My personal view even at that time was not to pay it and basically cancel for and let Airbus if necessary take Sri Lankan Airlines to court. Uh, then we could actually go and negotiate it because we always suspected that there was something wrong with the original transaction. The president at the time appointed a committee and the committee proposed a report in January 2019 and the president's basic question was what do we do with Sri Lankan Airlines. So there were three recommendations given. One recommendation was liquidate the airline and then start anew. Second recommendation was look for a partner. The third uh, recommendation that came was our problem is with Sri Lankan Airlines not with its subsidiaries catering ground handling our profitable subsidiaries and then therefore we should primarily focus on solving the problem of Sri Lankan Airlines. Now my fear is with the amendment to the Civil Aviation Act last week where uh, it, it makes the uh, situation more competitive for both ground handling and for catering and we agree with that principle that it should be more competitive but you cannot make it competitive without solving the Sri Lankan Airlines problem. That was uh, SJB parliamentarian Iran Vikram Ratna. So what is the opposition's view right now? It looks very lucrative to sell the national carrier amidst a thickening economic crisis. Now, is this the right thing to do? If you want to improve this airline, you definitely has to increase the efficiency, usage of flights and also increase the, the, the fleet. Uh, now cur currently Sri Lankan Airlines struggling without uh, spare parts even for the existing fleet. So with this kind of situation there is no way uh, we are going to uh, resurrect this airline without external support. So even though I am not generally a support of uh, privatization, I think there is no other escape route uh, to the government other than looking for an investor for this airline. It could be not, not just a 100% investor, it could be a partner, you know, private-public partnership. Uh, that is another alternative that the government can look for. Government can look for looking for even in, uh, listing this. However, the important thing here is whether the government will want to genuinely uh, restructure the Sri Lankan airline or whether some people will want to make a deal using this opportunity is a question. Because then there are Sri Lankan catering, uh, Sri Lankan logistics, those support services are making profits. They are different operations. So I have a great fear that uh, saying that we are going to restructure Sri Lankan airline, the people who are involved here, who have a corrupt history, uh, may want to sell these profitable ventures first. Well, that was uh, Member of Parliament and former Minister of uh, Media, Dr. Nalaka Gudeheva. Let's take a short break. The response from the Minister of Aviation right after this. This is the State of the Nation back in a moment. to the state of the nation well what is the government doing about the woes of Sri Lankan Airlines and what kind of steps are being taken to ensure that Sri Lankan Airlines flies the skies and does not crash in the depths 
Let's get the government's reaction to this whole matter. Joining me now is the Minister of Aviation, Nimal Sirupala de Silva. Thank you very much, sir, for taking the time to speak to me. Now, many issues with the national carrier pertaining to uh, staff shortages, salary, and more importantly, debt-ridden airline. Now, what exactly is the government doing all about this? Yes, Mahesh. Let me first uh, tell you about the allegation that uh, the, uh, we are we don't have necessary staff to operate the airline. That is not correct. According to the international norms and the practicality of running an airline, we have the necessary number. For example, I will give you certain figures. Uh, in 2019, we had 311 pilots and we operated 26 uh, fly uh, aircraft. In 2020, we had 339 pilots. We operated five because that was the COVID period. In 2021, we, op uh, we operated 13 uh, aircraft with 293 pilots. That was, of course, the part of the COVID period. In 2022, we had 295 and we operated 19 aircraft. Now, as at now, in 2023, we are operating only 15 aircraft with 273 pilots. And as at 1st June 2023, according to the figures, we are operating 16 aircraft and we have 262. So if you compare these figures, it is very clear the number of pilots uh, for the number of aircraft we are uh, using to fly is quite enough. So, th therefore, the allegation that uh, we don't have necessary number of pilots is wrong. And in the same way, engineering staff also, with the same staff, uh, we have operated more uh, 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 aircraft uh, uh, during 2019. So why can't they uh, do it now? But that is not the fact. Fact is something else. It's the go slow trade union action. Because the pilots, they refuse to fly during their off days. And uh, uh, engineers also, they went on a go slow campaign. So that is the result which brought this airline, uh, which was making a... Uh, profit in the sense uh, 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 last uh, year, uh, it, it, it has been uh, brought uh, uh, down very much. Minister, uh, there were reports in international media that the government is actually uh, going to sell off Sri Lankan Airlines by the end of 2024. Even uh, CEO Richard Natal spoke to a European aviation magazine confirming this. Is there a truth to that? And if so, who seems to be the buyer? Yes, we are not going to sell. You have to be very careful because we, we can't sell the airline. In terms of the Sri Lankan law, then we will lose our landing rights in many uh, important uh, 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 aviation fields if we sell it. So what we are going to do is we want to retain 51% with us and to divest 49% of the shares of the Sri Lankan Airlines so that it will be a joint venture. So, we, so about eight months ago, I carried a cabinet paper to the cabinet and uh, requested the cabinet to approve such a, a divestiture coming into an uh, uh, agreement, coming into a joint venture and run this airline because we are in debt. We have a debt of 1.2 billion US dollars. Uh, that is to the international ma market. We have taken about 175 million US dollars from the sovereign bonds and about another 100 million US dollars uh, uh, we owe to the lessors of the aircraft because we don't own a single aircraft. All these aircraft are being leased out from the lessors. So, so therefore, and even to uh, the, even to 
airport and aviation they owe some money and to the uh, petroleum corporation they owe money for the jet fuel which they have used. So, so therefore, we can't run this airline because we need a capital injection here. We have to put more than at least 500 million capital to make this airline a viable airline. So, the government has no money to do that and government don't intend to do that because we, 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 have, we feel the correct policy is to uh, go into a joint venture and get the necessary capital and ensure that the airline is run smoothly. So, that is the formula we have at the moment. So, we have not yet called for expression of interest from an from the buyers or, or the people or, or, or from anybody who wants to come and invest here. But there are a lot of inquiries from us, but uh, we can't uh, negotiate with them because now the treasury is the owner of this airline. It's a treasury owned company. So when I took this cabinet paper, the cabinet thought it's prudent to refer it to the treasury and treasury has taken the view and in consultation with the World Bank and the IMF also and they said the, uh, we must appoint a transaction advisor, an independent transaction advisor. That advisor has been selected by the World Bank and that advisor is working on that. So, but I am pressing on him and Mr. Suresh Shah he is in charge of this uh, privatization uh, process. So, I, I told him that I can't wait anymore. So, I, I need uh, this, uh, uh, private, uh, this uh, uh, joint venture to be done soon. So, he has promised me by end of this month they will get all the papers ready and they will publish it in the international media. So, that anybody interested can apply and they will, uh, we will appoint uh, com necessary committees and we will get the uh, 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 best proposal. Indeed, uh, Minister, in case uh, nobody buys the stake uh, that you guys are, are, are proposing, what kind of contingency plan is out there in order to make sure that uh, this uh, airline has smooth operations and it is brought to profitability? No, till the airline goes into a joint venture as we have envisaged, we have to run this airline. So for that purpose, we need, we need to get some more aircraft, but we have advertised to get some more aircraft, but very difficult to get A330 aircraft. We managed to get another five aircraft A320s, but A330s, uh, uh, there's a shortage in the market also. Uh, therefore, it's very, 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 very difficult to get that. So, uh, th th therefore, we are being affected by this international situation also. But I must say, the chairman and the board of directors, they are trying their best to make this a viable uh, uh, business venture uh, for which we need the cooperation of the trade unions, pilots, engineers, as well as cabin crew, and all other people who are working there. But if they don't cooperate, it's not the government will suffer, they will suffer because we will not be able to uh, go on the venture we have proposed. So if there is no taker, then, then we will have to ground this uh, 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 aircraft at, at uh, some time or other. So therefore, I always appeal to the trade unions and the uh, our workers they are to be cautious and cooperate with us uh, till we embark upon this process. All right, we have to leave it at that. That was the Minister of Post Shipping and Aviation, Nima Siripala de Silva. Thank you very much. As we are running out of time, we may have to ask our next segment on drug abuse in modern day teens in Sri Lanka. I sincerely apologize uh, to our guest who we couldn't get on the air or get on the show tonight, but we will certainly feature them on our next week's show. This is the State of the Nation, a short break now. I'll be back with the closing.
time as a millennial, which is now uh, closing in on 40 years, I have witnessed the charred bodies on a tire track, the assassination of a president, the election of uh, the world's first woman president, Sri Lanka winning the Cricket World Cup, the death of a princess, the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States, three global economic recessions, a tsunami, a death of a pope, a resignation of a pope, an end of a war in Sri Lanka, an end of a ruthless terror group, the LTTE, a missing commercial flight, another global recession, the highest voted president of Sri Lanka, an uprising that chased that president away from office, and then the default of Sri Lanka when we were not even bankrupt. We have endured trials and tribulations, but our resilience has always defined us. Now, more than ever, we find ourselves at a crucial crossroads. It's time to break free from the limitations that have held us back and reimagine the future we deserve. Our journey being by embracing our creative potential. We have a rich history of thinking outside the box and finding unique solutions to complex problems. It's time to tap into our collective brilliance and harness it for a brighter Sri Lanka for each and every one of us. From agriculture to technology, from education to social development, we have seen remarkable strides made by Sri Lankan innovators. These individuals have dared to defy the status quo, challenging conventional thinking and paving the way for a transformative change. It's time to unleash our creative potential and ignite a wave of innovative solutions. Together, we can fix Sri Lanka and shape a future that we can all be proud of. Together, let's think outside the box and forge a path towards a brighter future. Well, to share your views, thoughts and suggestions, do get in touch with us as we would like to hear from you. You can write to us about anything you saw on the program. You agree, disagree, please send us your comments uh, to stateofanation at derana.lk. I'm Mahesh Johnny. From all of us at Other Derana 24, have a good night and a productive week. I'll see you on Tuesday on Get Real. See you then. Bye for now.